thank you so much. What a wonderful time of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We really enjoyed the singing. All I need is you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that we are together after our day's good service in the morning and maybe a good sleep in the afternoon back again in the presence of God. In the presence of God there is joy. In the presence of God there is fullness. There is peace. No one will ever go back the way they come into the presence of God. And tonight I'm sure God is here to bless each one of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were listening to the work of the Holy Spirit, the resources of heaven, what God has a plan in our life, how we can link ourselves with the kingdom of heaven. And I'm sure God has a special, unique plan for St. Paul's, not like any other church. Very definitely designed plan for you. And I'm sure this evening God is going to speak to you again. All of you who are listening to God's voice here and over the nets and all over the world, a big God bless you. All I need is Jesus. And all you need is Jesus. And as we lift his name high, as you lift him up high, all the bondages, all the brokenness, all the nothingness will fly away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to look into Bible verses and quickly study and meditate and enjoy the presence. And as the Spirit is going to empower you, feel free to say hallelujah, praise the Lord, jump and dance and rejoice in God's presence. We'll begin, all of you take your Bible and we'll begin with John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1, 2 and 3. The John's Gospel, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, 2 and 3. Everybody knows this. In the beginning was the word yes anybody who has taken you can read in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God next verse yes any nobody has ready now yeah yeah anybody who has taken John chapter 1 verse 1 2 and 3 quickly in the beginning was the word and the word was with God the word was with God and the word was God the word was God next he was with God in the beginning he was with God in the beginning through him all things were made through him all things were made without him nothing was made without him nothing was made that has been made has been made so through him, through the word, through this word, all things were made. And nothing was made without the word. That means even tonight, as we sit together with the word of God, some things are going to be made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the beginning there was nothing. Everything was being made by the word. The word was God and the word was with God. Nothing was made without him. Everything, even today, is being made by the word of God. If you want to know a little more about the word of God, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3 again. Before we come into the main subject, we'll take a small introduction. 1 John, Epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. Epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. <coughs> we are all waiting for a fire, and the fire is going to fall the fire of the Holy Ghost yes and how does it happen when the word comes so John first John anybody who has taken please read it out loud for me that which was from the beginning that which was from the beginning yes which we have heard which we have heard so what happens the experience with the word of God you hear the word first to hear me speaking here you don't really ha don't have to come into this hall you can sit in the pre that hall in the church so you hear the word okay then what happens which we have seen with our eyes just we have seen with the eyes to see you need to come a bit closer to the word many of us many at times remain at the hearing level of the word we love to hear the word but tonight let me tell you 
you are not just going to hear the word, you are going to start seeing the word. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! How do you move from hearing to seeing? Very simple. When the word of God says, you are not the tail, you are the head, start seeing that. When the devil says you are sick, and when God says by the stripe of Jesus you are healed, see that? You believe that you are healed. Your joints may not be straight, your hands may be paining, you may have a severe backache, and you will be telling yourself, no, I'm not well, I'm not ready, I'm not fit. But the word says you are healed by his stripes. So you start seeing the word in your personal life. Most of us are hearers. But we need to move from hearing to what? Seeing. seeing the word. What is the next one? Which we have looked at. So after seeing, you need to look at it. To look at it, you need to come much closer than seeing. A person who can sit that far away can still see me. But if you really want to look at me, you need to come closer. So this is a different stages of dealing with the word of God. Where you start hearing, then you start seeing, and then you start looking at it. This looking has a more powerful meaning. In book of Hebrews it says, fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. That is the looking, means your eyes are fixed. This tube light is fixed here. Whether you come in the night, morning, Sunday, Monday, Friday, doesn't matter, winter, summer, this tube light remains there because it's fixed. When it says, look at Jesus, fix your eyes on him, fix your eyes on the word, that means your eyes are glued, which is more than just seeing. Don't be very casual with the word of God. We are not here for an evening walk. This is a race. We are not in a cruise ship. We are in a warship. There's so Amen. much of difference. Hallelujah. Many people think church is like going for a park in the evening. No, we are here for a training. We are training the soldiers of God who are going to fight the devil out of this country. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 You're going to fight the devil out of your place, your homes. Devil has no right in your life. The power of the Holy Ghost is going to empower you. How do you do that? By fixing your eyes on Jesus. Looking carefully every moment on Jesus alone. And that is when the power of the Holy Ghost is going to come into your life. So fix or look intently to the word. And that's what we are going to do tonight. You're not going to hear. You're not going to just casually see. But you're going to look. What happens the next one? That's even more exciting. After that, what happens with the word? What is the next? And our hands have touched. Has anyone touched the word? <coughs> Many of us hear the word. Many of us see the word. But only very few of us touch the word. If the current has to flow into your body, if the spirit of God has to infuse in your life, just that, like that lady who had issue of blood for 12 years, she decided to go behind him. She did not ask Peter and John, shall I go behind him? Then she would have never reached there. Some of us ask for opinion for taking, doing good things, and never ask opinion for doing something bad. <laughs> Some of us take permission for doing good things, but bad things are done always without any permission. She did not ask permission of the disciples. She did not even ask herself because she had spent all her money. By 12 years, she had finished all her friendships. She had seen so many doctors. She was so sick and she knew only Jesus could heal her. She didn't have the guts to go in front of him. She went behind him and touched his garment. Are you ready this evening to touch him? Amen. That is when the fire comes down. You need to touch <coughs> the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 I am very excited because God has a plan for this church. I am very excited because God has a plan in your life. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when a tsunami comes, it doesn't ask permission for you. It just hits you all down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we are standing in front of a tsunami of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Be ready to be blown away by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With this small introduction, I'm going to get more serious into my word. The word that God has entrusted me to share with you this evening. So first we will go into Psalm. We will read Psalm 84 verse 5. Quickly, if you read fast, then we will have more verses and more fun in the press. Psalms, verse 84, chapter 84, verse 5. Psalm 84, verse 5. 5. 84, 5. Yes. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. The psalmist is saying, God, how blessed are they who have their strength in God. Many of us trust in their strength, their own strength, their own knowledge, their own ideas, their traditions, all what they have. But blessed are those who have their strength in the Holy Spirit. What happens then? What happens? The last one. Continue, please. Who have set their hearts for yes. pilgrimage? Who have set their heart for a pilgrimage? Once you have your strength in God, your heart is on a pilgrimage. Hallelujah. 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 Your heart is on a pilgrimage. Yes. Tonight your heart is on a pilgrimage. Where is it going? Going to Zion. Zion. Where does the strength come? It comes from above. Where does the Holy Spirit come? It's going to fall from above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whose heart is on a pilgrimage. And what happens? Up to 7, verse 7. Please continue. As they pass through the valley of water, yes. they make it a place of spring. They make everything into a place of joy and strength. It doesn't matter how their circumstances. It may be sorrowful. It may be bitter. It may be terrible. But because their strength is in God, they make everything different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then what happens? Next verse, please. The autumn rains also cover it with holes. Yes. They go from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength till till when it goes. Till each appears before God is uh, till they are sixty years old and retire. Ah oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. They go from strength to strength till when? Till when? Till they reach the Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us think that the strength is there only in their 50s. And by the time they come to 60, their strength is over. <laughs> then their shape is gone, their walk is gone. It talks about Moses. His eyes didn't fade. If it can happen to Moses, why not you today? I am praying. I am praying. See, I was diagnosed to have diabetes about nearly 18 to 20 years back. When I met my ophthalmologist recently, he told me, better go and see a retinal surgeon because your eyes must be cooked by now. See, this is how our doctor said, my best friend ophthalmologist. I also thought that 18 to 20 years of diabetic problem, I don't say diabetic problem, my sugar being high, because I'm not diabetic. I'm George Kovu. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be under any Greek name. God has given you a nice name. So I thought, and this friend of mine is telling me in good ways that by now your retina should be gone. You better see a retinal surgeon. And his wife and him together takes an appointment with the best retinal surgeon. And we go together to the retinal surgeon and he looks at me and he takes a photograph of my retina by both eyes and I'm waiting to see the result. When the result came and I looked at it, it's like a virgin 30 year old eye. There is not a single spot of damage by diabetes on my eyes. Hallelujah! That is the transformation of the Holy Spirit that happens to you even if your HP A1C is high. Never mind, it cannot destroy you. You go from strength to strength to strength. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to tell you what is the strength and where does this strength come from? We'll turn to Psalm 86 verse 16. Psalm 86. Verse 16. 86 verse 16. Yeah. 1 6. Oh, turn, turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Here is a psalmist praying to God, turn unto me. God, we say turn unto God, we must turn. Now he is asking God to have a change. Without cervical spondylosis, he has to turn like this. Unto me. We can turn a fan. How many of you can turn God towards you? The psalmist is saying, God, you better turn unto me. You have that prayer tonight? Lord, turn unto me. Yes. You are going to turn God towards you. Because you are the one who needs the power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn unto me. And have mercy on me. And have mercy on me. And what does he say? Give thy strength unto thy servant. Give your strength unto thy servant. And save the son of thine enemy. He is not asking, give ten horsepower to thy servants. He is not ha asking, give me fifty ele elephants power. He is not even asking, give me some atomic power. He is asking, give me your strength. Look at the audacity. He is asking the strength of God Almighty. First, he wants God to turn towards you. Secondly, he is not asking something small. He is saying, God, give me your strength. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you will dare tonight to ask God, give me your strength? Hallelujah. I need you. I need your power. Yes. Not the preacher's power, not the teacher's power, not the pastor's power, but the power of the Creator, your God, God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to give you that power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Give me your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me your power. We always limit God we always frame God into a small box and we believe that God can work only within these guidelines. No, God is going to work beyond it. Give me your power. Once you are ready, you are going to be blessed. Can you ever catch the Niagara waterfall in a glass? Hello? Can you catch a Niagara waterfall in a glass? No. Can you catch the power of the Holy Ghost in yourself? Yes. God will transform your heart first. He will put a new heart. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah is free here, not charged. <laughs> so feel free to say hallelujah. hallelujah. And if you have your hand still working, please lift it up. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. When the power of the Holy Ghost comes into your heart, first God does is He changes your heart. He prepares you for the tsunami. He prepares you for your outpouring. He prepares your mind to receive His power. He is preparing you tonight for something very unique. Something which you have never dreamt before. You have said it's all over. You said it's all over. I am tired. I had enough. I'm going to die, just like Elijah. He wanted to die, but God had a different plan. He was not going to taste death. He was going to go like that. But Elijah, the prophet, said, I had enough. I want to die. And he goes and sleeps, thinking that it's over. The angel goes and says, hey, son of man, get up. You're not going to die. I'm going to empower you. Here is some manna, something new today. His mercy is new every morning. Something fresh today. You eat that, you have more to run. Some of you have run a lot before and you think that you are about to retire. No, you are just retreading for a longer run. 
God is going to empower you, anoint you, refresh you. Buckle yourself, hallelujah. hallelujah. Buckle yourself for not a safe landing, but a takeoff tonight. <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah. We are going to have a takeoff because God has something very unique in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You are requesting God tonight to give him, give you his strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you my testimony short in the morning. How you have those who haven't heard my testimony? Anybody here? Oh, there are some. Wow. So I may have to repeat a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then go ahead. Well, I have lots to say. That was only stage one. There are 15, 16 <laughs> things I may have to say. Hallelujah. I thought I'll move to the second one today. Would get coffee and some notes. No coffee, only Holy Spirit. <laughs> only Holy Spirit. Okay. I was born as a hydrocephalic baby. When I was born to my parents in India, in Kerala, I was non, not born as normal as you all are, but with a huge head and water in the head. And the doctors then, the neurosurgery training I had was from the best center in India called Christian Medical College Velo. They were the pioneers of neurosurgery in the country. The first neurosurgeon, father of modern neurosurgery in India, Dr. Jacob Chandi and Jacob Abraham, looked at me and said, this boy will not live. He'll be mentally, physically retarded somehow if you manage to make him live. My parents, they heard this verdict which said, no, everything is over. Now I do surgery for such patients. I put a tube in the brain and take the CSF down into the abdomen. It's called ventriculoperitoneal shunt surgery. There is a newer surgery called endoscopic ventriculostomy third went across to me. So there are many things that are being done now. Thank God there was no surgery at that time. They took fluid out of my brain a couple of times and said I'm going to die. Or physically, mentally retarded. People may declare things for your life, but don't listen to it. Because God has a different plan in your life. Amen. Satan may murmur something negative in your ears, but don't listen to him. Because he is a devil and he's a father of lies. God has a different plan in your life. Hallelujah. 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 When they all sent me off, my parents started praying. And God spoke to them. They, God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you. Let me tell you, they put this boy, a little boy with a huge head and a small body, and started praying when there was no hope. If you are facing a situation with no hope tonight, there is hope in God. Hallelujah. When you don't see an exit road and you are in the darkness, I can say there is light beyond because there is Jesus who is with you. Even though you walk through the valley of shadow and death, you will fear no evil because God is with you. Let me remind you, no evil befall you. However much the devil will say that you are going to be destroyed, God is going to build you up. God is going to empower you. God is going to anoint you. And God is going to use you like you have never imagined before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God told them just seek the kingdom of God. So what did they do? They left me as child who was vomiting, good for nothing, completely sick in the grandmother's hand. No parent would do that. Took the Bible, took their motorbike, started going into the streets of Kerala saying Jesus is alive he's a healer he's a savior he's a soon coming king hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. how could they believe and proclaim when they had issues in the house they just proclaimed the word of faith and when they went out for the kingdom of God the kingdom of God came down for me Jesus healed me and the same Jesus is alive today. Let me tell you, he's going to heal you. Hallelujah. If there is somebody who is sick tonight, who is listening to the voice of God tonight, who has some struggles and problems, doesn't matter what is your problem, God is going to heal you. Hallelujah. 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 If you go to the hospital now, and you have an ENT problem, you go to a specialist. If you have a bone problem, you go to an orthopedics. You have a cardiac problem, you go to a cardiologist. If you have a brain and spine problem, you come to people like me. And if you have a dental problem, you go to a dentist. 
but in the church doesn't matter what your problem is because my God who is a HOD solves all the problems all the departments it doesn't matter whether it's of the kidney of all the heart or whatever it is God is going to heal it hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah the first promise in the Bible is I am the God who healeth thee how many of you believe that the healing balm of Gilead is going to fall flow through your life and it's going to empower you it's going to strengthen you and it's going to fill you and the Spirit of God is going to use you and God heal me that's the first part that's the part that I shared with you in the morning but let me say a little more I want to go ahead a little ahead and say about two other episodes I still remember on one Sunday afternoon when the prayer was going on at home those days my father's younger sister Shanti auntie we call her and she was to come to USA and her boxes were getting locked up and one box wouldn't be opened so I said never mind I go and call the blacksmith I knew where he lives so the prayer was going on at home and I ran out and went took a shortcut and ran to the blacksmith's house and as I was running through the shortcut in a field in a small narrow road I didn't realize a snake fell off the ledge like this and I stamped over it and it just bit me on my right foot on a Sunday afternoon around 12 o'clock and I just shook it off and said in the name of Jesus say you go and I went off and I saw the blacksmith and I told him you need to come home but I casually mentioned on the way a snake had bit me so they all came around because they know my parents they said what happened snake bit you they came to the spot where it happened they found the snake and killed it it was a viper huge snake there and they realized that it is not right so they took me to a local doctor in those days uh, who treat these kind of special kind of medications they put on the leaves and some other magic and I had no idea what it was they put me in a hut like place and they were doing all kinds of things and then they ran to my father and said that your son is with such and such a place we call it Veshahari who treat the venom of the snake so he's sitting in that house a snake has bit him so the father had just finished his Sunday service my father is a pastor he came out on his bike came quickly to the place he didn't even look at the lady who was treating me took my hand and pulled me off and said let's go and put me behind this motorbike and took me straight to a medical school big hospital so when I arrived there was another girl who came at the same time with a cobra bite so I am on one bed and the other bed is cobra venom we are in a special room getting treated anti venom was started and I can see with my eyes the other girl is deteriorating minute by minute so I know that anything can happen but I said in the name of Jesus venom you have no right to move you be there I'm going to be healed after two hours my mother comes she stands next to me on the head and he says son are you right with the Lord I said, what a mother <laughs> I have been bitten by the snake and the other girl is dying I am in a special unit and the treatment is going said are you right with the Lord I said yeah I think so you know naughty days of your life you can't say okay everything is right <laughs> no you just get right with the Lord and just pray right now so that he is going to heal you it is not what the treatment that matters it is the healing hand of God a hydrocephalic baby healed by God is not going to die with a snake bite Hallelujah. 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 God had better idea than that. Amen. Devil may think that he can destroy you, but sorry. That's right. God is in control. And God never makes a mistake. God has no rewind button. There is no replay. He has only play button. Can you rewind your life? There's no rewind button. This evening meeting is unique. You will never get it back. So whatever you want to receive, receive it receive the power hallelujah. hallelujah receive the touch stretch out your hand and touch him and receive that healing Amen. because Jesus is here let me tell you God healed me this is a short extra experience that I had which strengthened my heart it didn't end with that I wanted to say another one as I grew and I came to 8th standard I was going behind the cycle of my friend and I slipped and fell 
and my left hip hit on a big rock and I started limping. I didn't know what happened. A young boy, so I just shook my leg and I said, it's all right. And after a few days, the limping is going more stronger and I can't walk. People started noticing me. So the friends who were so happy with me, saying, George, let's go and play football. Let's do this, let's do that. All of them are looking at me like this. See, if you're watching, going to watch a big music performance and the person who's going to sing is climbing up and suddenly falls down on the step, you unknowingly will laugh. The only person who will cry the one is the one who is falling. <laughs> or if it's her mother or his right. mother is around. Today is Mother's Day, right? right? So the only person who can make cry with you with your fall <laughs> is your mother. Somebody close to you. So when people started looking at me very differently, not like how I was before, finally what happened? They said, you need treatment. So my father took me to an orthopedic surgeon and he said it must be rheumatic fever. So he gave me a whole lot of medicines for rheumatic disease. There was no improvement a couple of weeks later. So they took another person, second opinion, and they said it may be bone TB. So another bunch of medicines. So I have one hand, rheumatic, the other one is bone TB. Both of them said don't stop anything because we really don't know what is happening. So I had these two medicines going on and I'm becoming more sick and I can't walk. By the time I had fluid in my knees and my walking became more difficult. So somebody said in Kerala, we have Ayurvedic treatment which is very good. So the massagers came and they put oil on me and started massaging and they started giving me some herbal concoction which is bitter. One big glass in the morning, afternoon, night, even if you're not sick, you'll be all right. <laughs> And then they put me outside the house with all oil. I can never come inside the house. I can't sit on the sofa. I can't hug anyone. Very difficult situation. So my.